How's it going, people? Well, I just got up here starting my weekend. It's going to be 80 degrees tomorrow. Uh, and I'm still on chapter one of View of the Hebrews. I'm going to have to do something about that. Page 20. Josephus records another striking event which seemed a sign of the destruction of Jerusalem. He says, addressing the Jews who survived this ruin, the fountain flows copious for Titus, which to you were dried up. For before he came, you know that both Siloam and all the springs without the city failed so that water was brought by the amphoria, a vessel. But now they are so abundant to your enemies as to suffice for themselves and their cattle. This wonder you also formerly experienced when the king of Babylon laid siege to your city. The priests of the temple, after the destruction of their sacred edifice, betook themselves, those who had thus far escaped the general slaughter, to the top of one of its broken walls, where they sat mourning and famishing. On the fifth day, necessity compelled them to descend and humbly to ask pardon of the Roman general. But Titus, at this late period, rejected their petition, saying, As the temple, for the sake which I would have spared you, is destroyed, it is but fit the priest should perish also. All were put to death. The obstinate leaders of the great Jewish factions, beholding now the desperateness of their cause, desired a conference with Titus. One would imagine they would at least now lay down their arms. Their desiring an interview with the triumphant Roman general appeared as though they would be glad to do this. But righteous heaven designed their still greater destruction. Titus, after all their mad rebellions, <coughs> kindly offered to spare the residue of the Jews, if they would now submit. But strange to relate, they refused to comply. The, no, uh, the noble general then, as must have been expected, was highly exasperated and issued his general order that he would grant no further pardon to the insurgents. His legions now were ordered to ravage and destroy. With the light of the next morning arose the tremendous flame of the castle of Antonio, the council chamber, registrar's office, and the noble palace of Queen Helena. These magnificent piles were reduced to ashes. The furious legions, executioners of divine vengeance, according to Ezekiel, then flew through the lower city, of which they soon became masters, slaughtering and burning in every street. The Jews themselves aided the slaughter in the royal palace containing vast treasures. 8,400 Jews were murdered 
by their seditious brethren. Great numbers of deserters from the furious leaders, faction, uh, leaders of faction flocked to the Romans, but it was too late. The general order was given, all should be slain. Such therefore fell. And that's, that's page 20. This is slow going, but just pick it away at it. We'll start on page 21 a little later. Just got here. Mm. My front porch needs to be completely redone. 